So we decided with this uh, very sympathetic patient to inject three zones because we have time for this. And we decided to inject first, you know, she has a little depression in the glabular area. So with the cannula, I will inject this area to restore the convexity of the glabella. And then there's a little depression here just over the end of the eyebrow. So you can inject, we will inject this. And we decided to elevate a little bit the, the eyebrow and we will inject the roof. The roof is the fat, the deep fat around the upper part of the orbital rim. And then if you see the profile of this patient, you'll see that there's no projection of the columnar area. And it seems that this columnar is inside the nose. So we want to increase and to obtain a better profile with a little, you know, descending columnar area. So I will do it with a tip, with a tip approach and to correct this profile. And then for the lower face, inject the mentalis area, the chin area to project the profile. And then she has is specific in that case, a little depression here, and I want to improve here the angle. So we'll inject the lower face and I will show you how we can do it. And then I want to show you very quickly the danger and the danger zone. So in the forehead, we'll inject the glabular area. So what, are, what is the, the danger zone in the forehead? Normally, just over the pupilla, you can imagine that you have the external part of the supraorbital pedicles and the same in the other part. And you know, globally, three centimeters over the orbital rim. Here, this is the danger zone if you inject deep. Because remember my video, all the vessels, they all come from the bone, so from the deep, the, the deep position, and they will cross all the soft tissue. For example, the supraorbital pedicles, it's deep here and more superficial here and then more superficial in the lateral part of the forehead. So if you inject here, you can inject deep, branches are superficial. If you inject here, prefer inject superficial because all the danger are in the death position. Except here, because I showed you that in this area, we are almost in the forehead, but there's no real danger. The temporal crest to inject the temple is here. So we will correct here this very little depression by an injection near the bone here and here in the temple through the aponeurosis of the temporalis muscle without any risk because I will be on the good area. The temple, the temple, the limit is the temporal crest in the upper part the zygomatic arch in the lower part, and you can separate this temple in two parts like this. This one is not so frequent to inject this one because normally there's less depression here. The main depression are on the upper part. That's a good news because when you inject it, if you inject deep near the bone, the product will stay in the good place because this is the area where the muscles, you know, inserts his fiber, its fiber on the bone. So the product is closed here is, you know, here you can inject deep, you cross all the soft tissue and the product will not move. But if you inject in the lower part, just over the zygomatic arch, first you have to inject very deep because you have more than 2.5 centimeters to touch the bone. You must inject more product and the product will be in a sliding area and you will find the product after two or three hours in the jaw because it's a normal way of the temporalis muscle. So inject it what you can cross, the superficial temporal artery, okay. And between the orbital rim and the superficial artery, you can find the projection of the fascial nerve. Okay, but even if you cross them with this 90 degree angle, 
with a skin, you can cross and, okay, you crossed and then, then there's nothing because you will inject deeper, you will inject near the bone and near the bone deeper, there's no risk. So that's a dense zone here if you inject superficially, but if you inject here near the bone, there's no problem. So how decision, if to inject here, if you have the supratrochlear area, so superficially with a cannula, then here, deep with a needle, deep with a needle. So I will do it for this area with the apriline normal. I will inject the convexity, but I'm on the superficial plane. I will just to restore the superficial plane and to treat these little wrinkles. So can you elevate, madame, here like this? I want to use only one point here because it's enough. It's not so important, the depression is so important. I want just to show you, to show you that this little pre-hole, okay? And then, okay, thank you. So, your second hand helps you because you have, remember, this is danger zone, so you have to stay superficial. So with your finger, you can feel the tip of your cannula and then you can progress. And if you have some resistance, don't insist. You retire and then you push. You retire, you push and you find the good plane and you create first the little area where you want to inject, but you do it very gently, very slowly and your finger will feel the cannula because sometimes if you go too hard you can cross the skin and too hard you can go deeper and cross some vessels so you can make some little injury with the veins and have some, some uh, bruising so that's we don't want to obtain any bruising so now I can inject here the product just to correct the depression and to obtain the good convexity between the two head of the eyebrows and the glabellar area. So without any neurotoxin, I will inject here and correct. If you make the little dissection like I did, then you will separate the skin and the muscles. So that's why after when she contracts there's less wrinkles because you created a plane between the muscles and the skin. So that's it for this. Now I want another the pre-hole needle and I want to improve and improve the, the position of the eyebrow. So I want to inject the roof. For the roof I touch the orbital ring and I want to be sure that my pre-hole will be in the bone contact. I have to touch the bone. I have to touch the bone. And then you can cross little veins sometimes. I can give you this. Okay. But it's not a problem. Not here because there's no blood. So it's not easy to find the hole. Yes, okay. And then you will find the same plane. So you have to touch and to sh research the good plane. Okay, I have it. I'm near the bone. I'm below the muscles. I'm between the periosteum and the muscle. And then I can go where I want here with the cannula. I can cross here, perhaps the supraorbital pedicles. And if I go, you know, internal, I can cross the supra trochlear and supra orbital pedicles without any risk and I want to fill this infra eyebrow area to give and laterally more product to give a good support a good deep support to the eyebrow I, I can inject it without any risk and without any vascular problem because I don't want to have some bruising or hematoma and you saw on the video that if you do it with a needle, you will cross every time a veins or an artery. So you do it like this, inject not too much product because I don't want to inject too much product, just to obtain well, this convexity and it will be 
a good support for the lateral part of my eyebrow. Okay. Make a little massage. So, I repeat, you fill with your finger the orbital rim. You just, in the lower position with, you know, the end of the eyebrow, you introduce your cannula and you, f you touch the bone. You must touch the bone. If you don't touch the bone, you will create another plane, a subcutaneous plane, and then you will not, after with your cannula, be in the good plane, and then you will see the product through the skin. So I find and I research. Okay. And then the patient, if she feels when you touch the bone, she feels the cannula. And then I'm on the good plane, I can go where I want. Sometimes you can correct very uh, important hollow eyes and you can treat these hollow eyes with the same injection. And then I inject the same quantity, 0 0.25 on this area. And a little bit more here on the lateral part. Okay. Thank you. Make a massage. And then because this is the same product I will use, I injected the glabular area, I injected the two roof, and I will use the same product to inject the nose. So after, I will inject the temple and the forehead. So I will take the needle. Yes, the same product, the same. Change, change the cannula, that because a new one. So this is, you know, I want to show you on the profile. I want to, you know, inject this area, the columnar area. And in this columnar structure, you have arteries. And main cases of necrosis of the nose are after injection of the tip, the lateral part, and the columnar area, because you have many, many arteries. So that's why the, the way the I want to do it with a cannula to not use needle here. So I make a little pre-hole pre just between the two doma, the two cartilage doma. And then I will introduce, you have some light. Okay. And then with your two other fingers, you take the columnar area, you introduce the cannula. So it's a little painful, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm okay, I'm on the good plane. So I'm touched, I'm exactly on the nasal spin bone. And then when I will inject, I pull the columnar area with my two fingers. And when I retire, the cannula, I inject the product. So there's no vascular risk. And then I inject this area to obtain a better profile. I will have a little elevation of the tip of the nose. I have a good support of the tip of the nose and then a better position of the collimator area. It's finished, okay. So if you see the profile, can you turn, please? Okay, c'est fini. C'était la partie difficile. Hein? And then you see that you can open the angle between the nose and the philtrum. So you feel it. Okay, you, that's what I want to show you. Yes, you can feel this area, obtain a good support and a better position on the profile. It, you, I will take some photo after. That is yes. And then we use the forte, forte with the with the needle, with needle. It's finished for the nose. You have some question for the nose? But you see that now you can see on the profile the columnar area because before it was inside. Then you have the good now definition of the columnar area and a better position of the tip of the nose with a little cephalic rotation of the tip of the nose. And it's quick and you do it with a, it's a one minute. Little painful, sometimes you can make a local anesthesia. Here, some xylocaine in the interpoint. It's better for the patient, but we don't have it now. 
Yes, please I give you this. And now I go back to the frontalis area. Because I changed the product. Now I change, I use the Apriline 40. I want a good crosslink product. I want to feel deep near the bone this depression that I have here just over the end of the eyeball. I injected near the eye with the Apriline normal, less cross crosslink product, less inflammatory reaction because more you have cross-linked product more you have inflammatory so around the orbit line normal i'm over the eyebrow i can inject here near the bone because here there's no risk all the nerves and the vessels are here and laterally near the bone no no vessels nothing because they are superficial with the temporarily superficial artery. So I can make a little bolus here. The aspiration is not necessary, right? Because if you want to be sure that the aspiration is efficient, you must change every time the needle. Because if you have some HA in the needle, you can make an aspiration with nothing. So except if you change the needle every time you, you, you make the injection, it doesn't work. So I make the little bolus here, okay and then make a little massage to correct this little depression. And then I will inject the upper part of the temple to finish here and to obtain a good, you know, convexity from the glabular area to the temple. So I inject below the temporal crest. You can see some veins through the skin. So we'll inject, for example, here. I go directly. I have to touch the bone and I can inject a bolus here. Sometimes you can cross some veins, have some little bleeding, but you can make a little compression and it's not a real problem. So it seems to be enough to help just here to obtain a good here continuity of the convexity. So I will inject in the spot a little bolus and that's it and make a massage and that's it. So what is the goal? I repeat, the same curve. Remember the youth and the female aspect is the curve, curve of the forehead here and here. So can you press here a little and change the, the side? Are you okay, madam? Yes. So, okay. Okay. So the same, just over the eyebrow, just here, I touch the bone, I make my little bolus. Here. The massage. So you saw that I did the forehead, I did the nose, I did the roof. Only two strain. You know, during the workshop, we all want to obtain the wow effect. So obtain a wow effect, you inject the 20 units. Yes, because with 20 units, you, you change the, 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 the physiognomy, you change the, the person. But you know, it's not the reality. In our office, you have no patients. Say, okay, have the money for 20, you can inject what you want. So it's not the reality. The reality is to optimize the product that you will inject to find with the facial analysis, what is the good area to treat the patient, to use less product as possible to obtain the best result as possible. And that's the reality of our activity in the office because even in the south of France, even in a, you know, in a country that you can normally have, you know, yes, this is okay. So we have not patience for 10, 15, 20 units of HA every consultation. So try to make the good analysis and to say, okay, I want to understand what are the best area to treat and to obtain a good result for my patient. So we did all the upper face and the nose and now I want to improve with the forte, the apparent forte needle. needle yes. So a good crossling product good crossing product and I want to treat the profile projection of the chin I want to increase the, the back position of the angle and create this little depression 
I showed you on the video that for the, je tourne vers moi, élever un petit peu, voilà. Comme ça, c'est bon pour la caméra. It's very simple. The position of your bolus, it depends of the size of your chin. You have a short or a long chin and then you will change the position. Here, you have a good balance between the forehead area, the mid face area, the lower face area with a good proportion. So you stay on the middle and in front of the chin and you make a bolus here, near the bone. Sometimes it could be painful, but this patient is fantastic because she, she doesn't feel anything. So uh, you can inject her here, make a bolus here. And the goal, you know, there's two goals here. First, to project the chin and second, to obtain because you, you, you made a bolus, the chin is more fine. So it's fine and projected. And now, it is a bleeding? Okay. okay. And now, for you know, the angle, you touch with your finger the horizontal branch of the mandibular area. Then you can feel, in that case, a little depression here. That's why she has this little. Did you have surgery in your mandibular? Vous avez une chirurgie mandibulaire en jeune enfin? Okay, so it's, so it's a normal evolution, no previous surgery. So I will feel here the depression and touch the bone. And exactly where I feel the depression, I make a little bolus here, very easy. Even if you cross the fascial nerve, is the okay, you cross it, but near the bone, there's no risk. And then if I want to improve the distance between the chin and the angle, I touch the angle, then the vertical branch, I put my finger just below the vertical branch, put my syringe on my finger, and I, fo I follow my finger. And I will, here, near the bone, inject the large wall and the posterior part of the angle of the mandibular area, mandibular bone. Okay. So the goal is make a message to obtain a better distance, uh, a high distance between this and this. And more you augment this distance, more you lift the lower face. Uh, it's logical. If you did this and this, you obtain a, a lift, a liquid lift. Okay. So this, the opposite side, we can feel here this little depression. So you can cross here, perhaps the fascial artery. But if I'm near the bone here, perhaps I can cross it here. But if I'm near the bone like this, I can inject here a little bolus without any risk. A little bit more. Then, the same than the other side, I touch the angle, put my finger along the vertical branch, my syringe on my finger, and then I push until I touch the bone and make a little bolus here. Okay. Okay, because I have a little bit more product here, I will finish with, you know, here, use perhaps a little bit more projection of the chin, that's it. And I use 3cc. 3cc, it's enough. Because that's, we talked with the patient before, her goals, her objective was to treat the wrinkles, to fill this area, to obtain a better position of the eyebrow, to treat this little depression of the temple of the forehead, and to obtain on the profile, good position of the tip of the nose, good definition of the philtrum, and then a good jawline, very regular mandibular line with the lift effect. So that's finished for this patient. So you will have 10 minutes for questions. Thank you for your attention and thank you, madame, because you were perfect. Thank you. <laughs>